Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and Godot just released Godot 4.2 Beta. So now what we're going to do is just jump right in right away and take a look at some of the features. This here is the starting point. It is just the project manager and you're going to notice some things have been redesigned. Uh, first off, they've moved the buttons over here. So here is the old version. And you'll notice they kind of mix the editing buttons, or so like here, selection buttons down here, and the action buttons over here. Now you will see if they've been split apart like so. Another thing that they've done here is streamline the import process. So instead of popping up a text button and then going into browse, it goes straight to a browse option. Pretty small stuff, but all the less and pretty cool. So let's go ahead, we'll create a new project. We will call it new project. And of course, this will go in C colon slash temp because all things go there. Go ahead and create this new project. And uh, I always forget to click the create folder button first. I do that I think every single time I demo things, but here we are in the brand new version. So let's give ourselves something pretty to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new scene here and I'm gonna showcase some of the new importing capabilities. So here we go. We have a blender scene right here. This is a Cinti asset uh, demo that I'm pulling in as GLTF. We have had uh, improved GLTF support here. We've got, now we've got features for, um, the uh, emissive uh, material strength settings. On top of that, the KTX image format, often used for basis universal in GLTF has been added uh, as well. So what I've done is I've exported this out as a GLB file, and now we are going to bring this into Godot. So here is Godot, here is the GLB file. So let's go over here. I'm gonna come back here. We're gonna use this guy later on. So I'll call this guy Cinti. By the way, that guy is available in a humble bundle. I will have that link down below if you wanna go ahead and check that out. But with Cinti selected, I'm gonna just go on over here to my uh, sample and we'll bring this guy in and drop it right there. So this is going to import in our um, GLTF or a GLB scene. I'll pause it while it does this. All right, so it has now been created. Let's go in here, grab it, and drop one into the scene like so. So now we have something to work with. Uh, as you can see, uh, once it finishes loading completely, this is a pretty much picture perfect import of what we started with. Obviously the lighting is different between the two scenes, but otherwise looks very, very good. The other thing you'll notice is a lot less visual clutter here in the interface. They've actually made it so that really you're only getting information on the actively highlighted thing in the scene. So you'll notice it is just a little bit cleaner on the whole. You'll also notice throughout the editor, there are a number of new icons where there weren't any before, just general improvements across the board. But I wanna show you the single biggest new feature in this in my opinion, with our scene selected, what I'm going to do is go over to the import tab. I'm going to do the dreaded re-import and we are importing it again. Now what you're going to notice when this is done importing, it is no longer going to ask me to restart Godot. That is something that I have been waiting for forever. I've actually never really understood why that limitation was in place, but now bringing your assets in and re-importing them, it just works. And that is, I think again, my favorite new feature in Godot 4.2. Now there are a couple of other cool things actually from uh, the importing process. I'm gonna go back here. Let's go and grab that other guy I've got. This is a pimpin' new feature. So let's bring this guy in over here and drop that into our scenes. And what you're going to notice here is if I go to this guy and I go to the advanced category, you now actually on the import have the ability to see and preview the animations that are attached. So I'm gonna go here and we'll show this as a linear animation and then boom. There's some weird clipping and you don't have a lot of control over where it's located so you can scroll it and such like that. But it's there are some cam, um, camera glitchiness to this feature, but you can actually now uh, actually preview uh, animations for imported scenes. Definitely a cool new feature here as well. Now, one last thing I'm not going to show you on the GLTF front, but a lot of the things that have changed here have also been added into here. So if you're doing an export out, as GLTF, all of the new functionality is supported in the exporter as well. So you've got good end-to-end -end support for bringing things in and out of the Godot game engine. All really cool. Again, less cluttered 3D viewport here. You're gonna see, again, new icons all the way across the entire environment. Now let's go back and show you another cool new feature. So I'm gonna go here. I'm going to attach a script to this guy like so, and let's go over to the script editor. So script editor got some really cool new features uh, going on here. One of the, my favorites is a very simple little thing. You can actually now do little things like to do and fix me and they highlight out separately, which is kind of neat. Another thing that you can actually do is type in region 
and then my region of doom as an example. And then you can use end region to finish it as well. But you can also do that. I can basically click a region of code like this, right click, and I can actually come down here and say, create code region. And then it's go my region of doom like so. And now what you've got, again, you've got this expandability there and drops in. So you can create these custom code folding regions in the editor. I definitely like that as well. Another thing you're going to notice with things selected, uh, there's just been little improvements across the board. So if I go here back to the um, 3D viewer here, pick a node in the inspector like here, what you're going to notice is if you go to any of the signals, for example, if you hover over a signal, you are now getting code completion like you would in the inspector. Also, if you right click something, you will notice there is now this open documentation feature here as well. Another thing that you might wanna notice is you'll notice I have this Cinti folder I created earlier on. I'm gonna go ahead and create another folder here as well. And I'll call this one another folder. And what you can now do is actually color code them. So if you've got assets, you want to put them in red folders, you can green folders for Cynthia assets, however you want to do it, you can do that now. So there's some really cool, neat, new user interface abilities inside of the editor itself. Now we're going to jump into the release notes. Now what you're going to find is this is massive. I went through and read this entire thing. This video is going to be seven hours long. I give you an idea of just how much is here. There is a lot going on in here. So what I've done is I've actually gone through the release notes and I've picked some like highlight features to talk about. So as you can see, there is just a bunch of stuff in this release. So I have my custom version of the release notes that we're going to check out instead. So basically we're, we're just going to check out a subset, probably about 30% of the things here. Do be aware there are some breaks changes to be aware of uh, so check those out immediately if you're porting forward uh, so there's definitely a few things that were changed that will impact how your code works a bunch of changes in the core systems as well as we go through here now you're going to notice anything I'm going to be talking about we're going to be indenting it here so we're talking now in the 2d and 3d features category so 2d got some really cool love uh, so there is now something called integer scaling. Uh, this means that uh, no matter what aspect rate, you'll still get square pixel grid without distortion. There's also a new tool for a uh, line 2D. You've got a closed property, which allows you to draw uh, enclosed lines with uninterrupted visuals. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then also in the 2D world for uh, precise normals from contact point of ray cast, the ability to cast very centric coordinates is going to be invaluable. Whether you're trying to make an F-Zero light game or implement gravity defying walks on walls, you can Think of precision you can thank precision render for this new feature uh it helps you handle rotation angles correctly there are two new global methods rotate towards an angle difference uh, cur uh, courtesy of Etty. Uh, on the animation side of things, uh, there's robustness of the animation system and their biggest contribution is a merging of sorts. So they are reworked and animation player and animation tree are, are being unified under the new animation mixer. This is definitely one of the breaking changes you want to be aware of. On the navigation side of things, you can now actually bake out 2D nav meshes. So bringing you to parity with the 3D nav mesh features. Uh, it is capable of handling physics uh, bodies, uh, mesh instances is plane polygons and tile maps. So uh, 2D navigation is now available. On the topic of tile map, it got a lot of love here. And I know this is one of those areas people were very frustrated about Godot 4X over uh, Godot 3. So we're starting to get more of those functionalities in place. So there's a bunch of usability here. So um, Giles did uh, groundwork for future improvements with internal refactoring earlier this year, followed up by two major performance optimization, cutting down update times multiple times over, thanks to smart tile grouping using quadrants and Y sorting upgrades. So basically, it should just run faster. And then there's a bunch of usability improvements to creation and utilization of time maps contributed by Tomas. Uh, probably the most notable in this release is the new tool, which allows you to flip and rotate any tile or tile pattern when placing them in the world. And there's a bunch of other things here, scene tiles, polygon editing, various hints, tips, uh, and so on and so forth. So tile maps definitely got some love in this release. Moving on, I uh, actually showed you some of this stuff in action, but we've got some improvements to the code editor. So now it has support for those named regions. You can do like the right click and create a named region, or you can use a double hashtag to create one yourself. Uh, so it allows you to make things easier to navigate, but it doesn't affect the flow of the program at all. Uh, the logic behind commenting out a part of your code was also made more um, predictable. And that's as with the toggle commenting behavior. Now there's another thing in here, and I don't actually know how to get this to work, which is a shame because it sounds very cool. As you can now kind of follow the 
uh, blender way of doing things. For example, G to move things. And G means grab, by the way, if you're not used to uh, Blender's weirdness. R for rotate and S for scale. Now, what's really cool with those is you can actually do G and then a number. So you want to move something, you can do G and then 5 or G, X, and 5, and it will move it 5 down the X axis. So you're going to be able to use those as well. You also have uh, updates if you're going to use traditional screen gizmos. Uh, for example, you can now have uh, box collision shapes. You can uh, pick the sides can now be extended individually within the viewport editor. And again, less clutter in general. Uh, various auxiliary visual information is only displayed for the selected objects. So you can see before and after. And again, when I came back here and kind of showed you, it's just so much cleaner in the user interface when it's down to like, especially once you start adding more and more uh, systems into here, it just makes it much cleaner to work with, which I definitely appreciate there. Uh, a lot of improvements around uh, docs and resource editors. We showed you this as well. So the context menu, the right click hover, uh, the file system has the color change stuff that we showed earlier on. Asset library got some improvements as well. Uh, so improved sorting, overflow, and so on. Uh, you can also install your assets to a special specified folder if you now wish to do so. We mentioned the uh, changes to the project manager at the beginning there. Now there's some uh, plumbing kind of changes that have happened as well. So one area is editor plugins. Uh, this one is going to be if you're making tool scripts and you're going to like this one. It makes it so that you can get access to the editor screen uh, so much easier than you used to before. So if you need to do sp like special code, etc., there is now this singleton that is exposing out the editor interface to tools programmers. That should make their lives a lot cleaner, a lot less hacky. Uh, it'll handle members to get direct reference to a 2D and 3D viewport. That's nice. And also editor plugins can now uh, trigger the warning dialogue, prompting the user about unsafe changes when closing the editor. Uh, moving over here, GD Extensions also got some improvements. Now, GD Extensions is the new way of creating kind of like modules, but modules had to be built into the engine itself. GD Extensions can be made dynamically and redistributed and shared, etc., which is quite nice. Uh, so uh, GD Extension got a lot of love here. Notable improvements include, uh, include unexposed class registration, custom callable support, index properties, and advanced uh, registered property management with the validate property function. Also a major long-awaited feature of of the development workflow of the extensions after some initial work uh, was able to implement in, head, in editor hot reloading. So you don't have to restart to make change. If you make changes to your GD extension library, it can actually now be hot reloaded. So if you're working on a GD extension, that's going to make your build test cycle so much faster. Uh, and dynamic libra libraries can now be loaded on web platform means GD extension can be used with web export. Another really big one uh, there. So GD extensions are getting uh, much more useful in that regard. A number of improvements on the uh, GUI theming stuff there. So here's a visual shader with the updated graph edit node as an example. Uh, then moving on the asset pipeline, I talked a little bit about how uh, GLTF was improved. Also talked about the new uh, animation playback preview right in the import aspect. But the biggest thing, of course, is that you don't need to restart the editor after you change an imported type. I never really understood why that was a limitation, uh, but that's gone now. And thank goodness. That is probably, again, my favorite feature of this particular release and a bunch of improvements to a GLTF. Uh, again, you now have a, a missive uh, that emissive extension there. So materials emissive strength is now supported both on the import and the export, by the way. And as you can see, the, um, the preview is there. They need to work on a little bit on the camera there for it, but otherwise it's going to be very handy for seeing, you know, did my animations make it in? Do they look right? Etc. cetera. Uh, so the exporter got love as well. Improvements to the input system, uh, fixing of some outstanding bugs. Uh, we also have some improvements to a uh, network multiplayer. So multiplayer synchronizer node now supports synchronization of sub-resource properties, transform components, and other index data without having to synchronize the entire object. Uh, security fix in there as well. Uh, another very big one here is... Um, so uh, part of the support includes better integration with the host environment. In this release, uh, you can now have native file selection dialogues for Linux, Mac, and Windows, allowing you to leverage familiar user interfaces in your games and apps instead of having to use kind of the Godot version. You can actually use native Windows file system. Now, I would actually love to see the Godot editor uh, give the option, and nothing against you know the file open dialog. I just like the native ones better. But you can actually, in your own game, you can now call the native stuff, which is a cool improvement. Uh, an Android 
Android, uh, some improvements on the platform in general. Uh, so de they decoupled the Godot application part from the Android fragment component, unlocking new features in the process, such as having multiple windows and quicker startup times for Godot apps and games. Uh, a couple of other improvements there as well. So you've got support for Android stylus pressure and tilt support. Uh, so kind of bringing you to parity with Apple. Uh, they also got uh, iOS, got some improvements there as well. Uh, on the rendering side of things, we've got, um, if you're using compute shaders, a pair of goodies to make your life way more exciting versus the newly added ability to create custom texture objects. Uh, you can see how this works in practice, creating a water effect. Da, 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 da. Um, and there's going to be a compute texture demo showcasing it. Another submission sets of APIs to call compute code on the render thread. So if you need to synchronize between the compute shaders and the rendering, you will be able to do that. And then we got the big stuff from the graphics world. The big one to start off with is AMD's FSR. 2.2 is now supported. This is one of the most popular upscaling technologies out there, especially thanks to the Steam Deck. Uh, so it, it is now uh, in place, which is very cool. Also implemented prerequisite support of motion vectors and skeletons, blend shapes and particles, and solved many of the issues with the current temporal anti-aliasing system uh, that has been plaguing users. Also a new light mapper is in place. They use something called OIDN Noiser, and they've switched over to something called JNLM Denoiser, uh, which gets rid of some of the issues. It's also a lot smaller. So you actually should see the binary size for Godot gets even smaller, which is kind of insane. On the rendering side of things, Forward Plus and mobile rendering um, got 2D HDR rendering, which gives you 3D effects such as glow for 2D games. Uh, you can substantially improve the quality of 2D rendering at the cost of performance. Uh, compatibility layer also gets a new and anticipated feature of 3D shadows. Speaking of compatibility, there's also now the optional angle back end. Uh, so on devices where OpenGL support is kind of garbage, uh, Angle gives you OpenGL on metal or direct 3D. It's going to allow you to work with older deprecated OpenGL drivers. So basically, if you've got uh, a potato of a machine and you want to support it, so older integrated chipsets, etc., Angle should make that magic happen. Uh, on the particle front, it is now possible to directly animate velocity over life, inherit projectile velocity, and change the emission amount of particles. While this is significant rework, it was done in a way that avoids compatibility breakage. Uh, some other changes with particles in general as well. Um, and then on the scripting side of things, uh, more general, Script Debugger now supports for threaded code. This was added in Godot 4 earlier on. Uh, so it, it now uh, with better multi-threading support in Godot 4, it's, it's possible to actually debug those extra threads. So you can see that you can switch between the threads and the debugger now there. Uh, C Sharp got some pretty big news. Uh, so the biggest one is Godot 4.2 features experimental support for Android, .NET 7 Plus, and iOS, .NET 8 Plus, required, uh, but there are experimental export targets for C Sharp using both of those platforms. And I know this was a big deal breaker for a lot of people when it came to C Sharp support, so that is definitely a big development there. Unfortunately, it is experimental at this point, but it should get better. We also got some just general improvements to C Sharp support, better interop with GD Script, better binding generators, and so on. Uh, GD Script also got some love in this release, so um, you've got uh, release comes with a few additions to empower your statically typed code. Primarily among them is a new warning that reports all cases of untyped code so that you can make sure your code base is strict and consistent. I'll help you ensure you never trigger this warning. Uh, for loops now support static typing, and you can use preloaded uh, scripts as a hint as well. Uh, beside the typing improvement, another bunch of features uh, include raw string literals or R strings, as well as return type covariance and parameter type contravariance. At the same time, uh, George implemented pattern guards for more advanced match statements. He also authorized optor uh, operator calls. Uh, yeah, and then uh, we've got some uh, kind of progress report going on, what's going in the world of XR. And yeah, that is it. It is available for download on their website. The link is available at the bottom. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Good Joe uh, 4.2. And one quick reminder, all of the scenes that you see here, this is available in the Polygon bundle. As you can see, it works incredibly well with both Blender and Godot Game Engine. And uh, if you wanna go ahead and check those out, those are available on this bundle right here. So ladies and gentlemen, that was it. That is Godot 
2, uh, first beta. That means that this is basically feature freeze. Uh, We're going to see um, no new features. We're just going to basically get bug fixes from this point out. Pretty exciting release. And again, I, I only went through some. There were 270 contributors, 1,200 improvements overall. So I couldn't get everything into this video, or this video, again, would be like 30 hours long. But I think I got a lot of the greatest hits. If you contributed something and I missed it or didn't cover it, please don't take it personally. I love all of your efforts. I just can't put them all in a video. Hopefully you guys found that useful, and hopefully you're excited about Godot 4.2. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.